Welcome back everyone. We've got our G366 and back to your guys' comments. Everybody wanted to know what a timing advance does and how it affects our saw here. Now lots of saws they do like a timing advance. Some of them are already pretty far advanced from the factory. Some coils have a nice easy starting ignition curve. Lower timing to begin with and then it raises as the RPM raises. So we're going to get this one fired up and we're going to hook up our self-powered timing light and we'll look and see what the light does, see where the base timing's at, and we'll advance in a time or two, see what kind of power we make with our stock porting. We'll check the base timing and then we'll advance it and maybe even dial back the timing a little bit and see how that affects our power curve and what this saw does. Now for these tests, we'll probably have the top cover off and maybe even pull the recoil off. We'll just see how it goes. We want to be able to see what our timing light says the timing is doing on this saw uh, while it's running. Now if you do a lot with the automotive, you might even have some timing tape with some marks. But this flat surface right here is going to work real well. We can lay out our own timing mark. I'm going to guess this is in the neighborhood of 25 degrees before top dead center. I see it. Now I gotta be honest, I don't normally get that lucky. But my thought process is when you fling these clips, if you look where the sound's at, you might actually hear it fall and see where it lands. So we got lucky there. I know everybody watching, if you've ever pulled it off, you've set one of these flying too. Just admit it. Now, I would like to know everybody's thoughts on this saw, uh, on this project. So far, we've been getting lots of good comments. I definitely appreciate it. But I'm still not sold on being able to recommend these for anything other than learning and getting into this hobby. So I'm definitely not going to port them other than for our events. <clears throat> so the main reason I got these is for the events. That's the only reason I'm porting and playing with it. But just like I'm doing here, these are awesome test beds to learn on. Now, if you rely on a saw to make a living, definitely can't recommend these. But if you do, leave a comment, let me know how they're treating you guys. But when customers ask, I just can't, can't feel good about recommending. But if you do want to buy a clone to play with, to learn on, to experiment on, check out the guys at bluesaws.com. Definitely take care of you there. Looks like this fin right here is going to work really well for our pointer. So I'll mark it real quick. You'll be able to see those a little bit better once it's actually held on the bench. I'm gonna fire the saw up, get it all warmed up, and we're gonna pull the recoil off. So then we'll hook up our timing light and see where it's at. I had an idle, and I'll see if I can show you guys if this curve advances or stays the same as we rev it up. So let me get this fired off. So, I have two marks put on here, one right here and one down here, and I will put the degree wheel back on and we'll see exactly where those are. So I will put the degree wheel on and check, but at an idle, 
the timing light and this mark was lined up right about there. And then any kind of throttle, we did get it to line up pretty close with this one, but past that at full throttle wide open and settle back down right about there. So we have a self-powered timing light, that's what I was using. Now actually if you have a 12 volt supply and a dial-in timing light, you wouldn't even have to mess with the marks. You just have to put one mark and it would tell you exactly what the timing was doing. So that method is probably the best, most precise way to do it. All right, so I got the degree wheel. This is our digital unit that we sell on the website, worksaws.com if you're looking for a degree wheel. 12 and a half cranking it over, 30 degrees is the furthest that it does advance and then it settles in at 28 degrees wide open. So we'll pop this flywheel off and we'll give it 20 thousandths off the key which works out real close to five degrees and we'll try five degrees advance and then we'll flip the key around and we'll try five degrees the other way. I just want to see how bad it kicks and bucks. So if we're at 12 and a half degrees stock we just added five that'll be 17 and a half which shouldn't be too bad but if we really get yanking it over then we might go into that advanced part of the coil because i don't know what rpm it actually advances let's put everything back on this time since we don't really need to see anything we already did our timing light to get our marks would have been a whole lot easier if we had a dial adjust timing light but this is what we have. Alrighty, here's our G366 with the timing advance. Let's get it warmed up. We'll make some power pulls, see if it likes the advance. we back the timing off this is five degrees less than where it was factory so we'll see what that does to the power curve So this little contraption here might be about the most important thing if you think you want to run funny fuels. This is a spark checker and we have a thimble here and it opens and closes the distance of the spark. Now I don't know some aftermarket coils are super hot some of them not very much. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up and we're going to see how much of a gap this spark plug we're gonna see how much of a gap this coil will actually jump. You'll see the spark jumping from here. And it recommends being to do at least, looks like six millimeters. Now some real strong coils I've actually been able to get to jump all the way to 10 or 11 here. That's quite a gap across there. So let's see what our little clone coil does. Yep, so we're just barely getting over, just barely getting over to the six line, which that's not a good sign for me and the other people wanting to run methanol and nitro in these because as we know from the funny cars, the nitro needs all the spark and the methanol needs all the spark you can get to light it up. So we might have some work to do there, but I just wanted to show this little tidbit. We're back at factory timing. Still the big carb, empty can, muffler mod, and air filter mod. So I hope you enjoy that, but we'll go to the bench. We'll talk this over. So I kind of wondered about that, and I don't know how well you could hear it, but during the advanced run, you could kind of hear it popping under light load. And then when we took all the timing back out and went less than factory, it just didn't quite have the snap and the zing which you'll be able to see on the graph. So both of those runs 
didn't really pan out the way we wanted. And I'm going to leave the timing right at the factory mark with this. Now what I might do, especially on our wild build that we're going to do for the racing, I think we'll probably try and find an OEM coil, see if it changes things up any at all. So on this build right here, we're definitely going to stick with all these parts. They're still working, doing their job. And if you're enjoying these type of videos, make sure to hit that like button. It definitely helps the channel out and helps get this video out there for other people to see. So hopefully me taking the time to figure out this timing advanced stuff will help you guys build better saws and people in the future. Do you want to, do you not? Now this mainly applies to this 366 or a steel MS 361 because some saws absolutely love a timing advance and some don't. This one doesn't appear to be liking extra advance. Now is that an aftermarket thing or is that a 361 thing? I'm not 100% sure yet, but we'll take a look at the graph. That way you can see what I see on the curves. So let's take a peek at that. The blue lines are the pulled timing. Red lines are timing advance. And the green line is where we left off. Big carb, filter horn modification, muffler mod, and the empty muffler can. So you can see, just looking at the horsepower numbers, 5.8 horse, just like last time, that's where we left off. This is the run from last time. And we timing advance, 5.72 horse. So power dropped just a little bit, peak to peak. And then we took all the timing back out and then went five degrees less than factory. And we got 5.65 horse. So we lost power with both of our timing moves, lost torque, with pulling the timing. We did gain just a little bit of torque with advancing the timing, but if you look at the curve, this red line, it falls a little bit flatter up where you're actually gonna be cutting. And that seems to line up with that popping that you can hear under light load. So down here, it likes a little bit of extra timing. Things are moving slower, has time for that ignition to actually make power. But once you get up top at speed, it does not like the extra timing. It actually is pulling the power down. When we pulled all the timing, we lost power everywhere, which makes sense because we aren't too far from ideal with our factory timing key. So that's what these lines are telling me. And hopefully you guys enjoy. And I'll put a couple other videos up here that you might enjoy as well. So make sure to check those out. And as always, thanks a lot, everyone.